Hey, this is Rick Casals from ExercisesForInjuries.com. I'm down here in San Diego at uh, the Turbulence Training Summit or TT Summit. I stepped out from the conference and I'm going to do a quick Skype video interview with Forrest Vance. And, you know, Forrest and I are, are going to kind of chat about kettlebells on like the starter's guide to kettlebells like from the absolute beginning of the kettlebell stuff because I've been playing around with them more I've been you know at the at the start I thought it was just going to be another toy that entered in the fitness industry that would be popular for six months and then ab and then leave but it's something that's stuck and I'm starting to see the benefit of, of utilizing the kettlebell when it comes to unique exercises unique workouts and you know, exercises you really can only do with the kettlebell and nothing else when it comes to injuries and exercise. So f first I'll get Forrest to introduce himself and let people know a little bit about him, uh, who he is. Yes, thank you for having me, Rick. Much appreciate it. Um, I am a, a, a trainer, boot camp instructor, gym owner, kettlebell guy, kettlebell expert based out of uh, Sacramento, California. And... Um, had my uh, you know athletic background in the past. Played pro football for a couple years, um, and uh, that was about ten years ago. I played offensive line. I was about sixty-five pounds heavier when I was playing, <laughs> and uh, ended up you know right after I after I left and I retired and I knew I wasn't going back. Um, the, you know we the way, I was a strength athlete, so the way that we trained was a lot was we lifted heavy. I was force feeding myself, trying to be as big as possible and so I had to adjust to the to the real world and kind of get down and get you know get slow. I wanted to not be 310 pounds anymore because uh, you know there's a lot of things that go along with that and what I didn't work out as hard when I stopped either so a lot of it I ended up getting kind of fat you know to be honest huh. um, so lost a bunch lost like 64 pounds in seven months um, that was right after right after my football career and that sort of transformation kind of got me into the fitness industry and, uh, you know, that was about, that was, like I said, almost 10 years ago. So now, you know, I've been training for almost 10 years and I got into the kettlebells about five or six years ago. And that's done a lot to help me maintain my own fitness and help me, help, I use them with my clients every day at my, at my studio. And, uh, it's helped me maintain my own, you know, weight loss as well. Awesome. So let's start like, you know, like what is the kettlebell? The kettlebell is like a hunk of iron with a handle on the top. Um, and I personally believe they're the best strength and conditioning tool around for losing fat, building muscle, and boosting your performance. Okay. And then how did you get it? Like how did you how did you find the kettlebell? How did you get into it? Because if you think like professional athletes, I don't you know, I, I think of them, I envision them you know, doing the barbell stuff, the, you know, bench press and, and all the mm -hmm. barbell stuff. I don't envision them, you guys in your training programs doing a lot of kettlebell stuff. Yeah. I think, um, I think now, you know, more now that kettlebells are, have picked up a little bit of steam. I think a lot more people know about them even than when I started training with them five or six years ago, you know, um, I think there are a couple NFL teams like their strength coaches are big into the kettlebells at this point. But like when I was – now kettlebells have been around for a long time. You know, then Russia, the military used them for, has used them for a long time like as their standard issue like weight. You know, if you look at uh, pictures of like old-time strongmen from the turn of the century, they were using kettlebells, you know, along with it, like lifting two people on one hand and a kettlebell on the other hand or whatever. <laughs> I got a picture actually I'm looking at it right now in my gym. It's a Eugene Sandow and he's got a kettlebell on his bottom hand, you know. Uh, but they weren't – popular in the mainstream until until maybe you know five or six years ago so 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 uh where was i going with that oh yeah so when i was playing football didn't really use, i wish i had known about kettlebells but didn't really use them back then um but the way i got into them i had this crazy training partner guy and he <laughs> that was his exact name crazy training partner guy <laughs> yeah, exactly it was just like ex-marine uh and we were doing uh, this really intense workout program. He was into kettlebells, wasn't really like an expert in the technique, so we just kind of flop them around, you know. And then, but I was like, wow, that's a really cool training tool, and I could see how this is such a great workout, like for your whole body. It's 
and we can get to this a little bit more later, but you can do a lot of things like you were saying, you know, a lot of pe- people might see kettlebells and think, Oh, well that's just a weight. Why don't I just use a dumbbell, you know, but you can do like uh, a kettlebell swing is a good example of a movement you can do that's uh, you know, it's, it's a high rep ballistic exercise and, and, and the kettlebell lends itself to doing those sort of things a lot better than really any other training tool. Um, and you you know you can just get a really fast efficient workout in a short amount of time in a minimal amount of space, which is really awesome as well. Okay, and and then looking at like where can someone you know get a kettlebell, and what, like what should they and what should they look for in a kettlebell? Well, that's a good question. Um, well, first off, I think you know you can. It depends on the quality that you want to get. It depends on what you're going to be doing with it, right? So you could probably go to any, you know, I mean, I think I've seen them like at like Walmart and stuff nowadays, yeah. but I don't yeah. really recommend that necessarily people get them from there because the quality is not going to be that great, you know? And they're also really light. And, the, and that's a big mistake a lot of people make is that when they're starting, they start with like a three-pound kettlebell or something because they don't want to injure themselves, you know, they don't want to do things incorrectly. But the reality is if it's so light, a lot of times you, you can't use proper form and you're really not getting anything out of it, you know. So I would say go to your, you know, you can order them online. There's certainly some good places to order them online. Um, like at my gym, we have all bells from Dragon Door because I think they're the, I just like those that brand of kettlebell. Um, Apollo is another good brand that you could order if you're going to order them online. Um, but, uh, you know, it depends on what you're going to be doing with them. If you're just going to be doing some more basic stuff, you don't have to go out and get the, the top of the line type of kettlebell. If you're going to be doing more advanced exercises, because the thing is like the kettlebell will rotate in the palm of your hand. So like example, doing a clean, doing a snatch, those exercises that are on the spectrum a little bit more advanced. Um, you know, you can get like abrasion and stuff in your hands when you are doing high reps with those exercises. I've actually heard stories of a kettlebell falling apart when someone had it pressed over their head and the ball fell on the top of their head. (laughs) So that's a good story to not use a cheap kettlebell. (laughs) I hadn't heard that, but I could see it happening. Wow. Wow. So, So then looking at the kettlebell, like why should I choose a kettlebell over a dumbbell? Um, well, like I said, you know, there's certain exercises that you can do with a kettlebell that are, it looks like I said, it looks something kind of like a cannonball with a handle. So it's got a thick grip. So it's a thicker grip than a dumbbell, which is great for building grip strength and functional type of strength. Um, the weight distribution of the kettlebell is a little bit different than a dumbbell, right? Um, so, you know, let's say you're doing a press. You can probably be able to kind of see my hand here, right? The, the kettlebell is going to be on this side, and I'm going to be doing a – too bad I, I should have a kettlebell with me here. But uh, I would be the, – the weight distribution makes for a different challenge. You have to use your grip and your wrist and, and, and stabilize the bell a lot more strongly than you would with a dumbbell, um, which, you know, like say people anywhere from everyday type of activities or they need to strengthen their grip all the way up to sports or anything like that that they would be playing um, is, is beneficial. Mm-hmm. And, the, and then also, like I was saying, um, the kettlebell swing typically is going to be done for higher reps. It's a movement that's going to be done for higher reps. So um, I'll give you a, a very good example. Certain schools of training, I'm not going to exactly say what they are, but some they'd like to do high rep Olympic lifting, Right. That's and, and that's just kind of a slightly popular thing. Some people do that. Have you heard, I'm sure you've probably heard of this, Rick. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I don't know how you feel about this. I'm not a believer in high rep Olympic lifting, and in 95 percent of cases, because it usually people just get sloppy, and they're mm-hmm. not supposed. That's not how it's supposed to be done. You know, you're not supposed to do a clean and press or a snatch for 30 reps for time. You know, yeah. Yeah. with an uneven bar. With, yeah. Anyway, but so because. So you know, some people may be able to do it, but a lot of people can't do it properly. It gets really sloppy and you get injured, Injured, you know. Um, so now as a, as a, to counter that, if you, if you want to get some of those same benefits, but be able to keep it safe, stay injury free, 
you can do something like a kettlebell swing. Um, so you get a lot of that high rep ballistic conditioning benefit. Um, with a swing, you get all different types of stuff like having to de decelerate the, the load at speed, you know, which is great. Like a lot of has a lot of applicability to different sports and stuff like that, where you'd have to absorb force. Um, and you know, it's also relatively easy to learn compared to say a power clean. A yeah. kettlebell swing is a lot easier to teach someone than how to properly do a power clean. You know, so that's that's another another big benefit as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then and then. You know, looking at like what are some, I mean, maybe just list off a couple examples of some exercise that are unique to the kettlebell that you know can't be done with another piece of equipment or is not as effective uh, mm -hmm. with another piece of equipment. I know it's difficult to kind of demonstrate here, but uh, sure. I mean, we either you know you can you talk about a little bit and give a little bit of a description. Okay, sure. Um, well, the the two like basic movements that we start with, uh, and, and at least in the hard style school of kettlebell training, um, you know, there's, there's, there's definitely different approaches that people take and stuff, but you know, if you want to do competitive kettlebell lifting, that's one thing you're training specifically. It's like actual sport. Um, but for the school that I, that I teach, it's like for, you know, another 98% of people who just want to use kettlebells as a tool to get in shape, to lose fat, to gain lean muscle, yeah. to, you know, um, you know, anyways. Okay. So, so uh, the Turkish get up and the swing are our two kind of basic movements that we always start people with. Um, so, and with both of those, I think you and I, you know, I have, a, I think I have a video for both of them. Mm -hmm, so we, so we have, we, you and I've already done a video when it comes to the kettlebell swing and we've right. also done a video when the Turkish get up. So I mean, you know, if you want to see those videos, just head over to exercisesforinjuries.com or just type in kettlebell on my YouTube channel and those will end up popping up. But those are two unique exercises that are kind of best done with the kettlebell. That's right. Exactly. Like, like, I, like I was saying, that a lot of people try to do swings with a dumbbell. And while it can be done, it's not really quite the same. And that's a lot of it is because of that weight distribution of the bell, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so you have a handle and then you have a, then you have a, a weight on the bottom of the handle. So you're able to hike past the weight back and exert a maximal amount of force as it comes up to your chest level, which is what we do is the Russian swing. You see other, some people do in the overhead, like American swing, they call it or whatever. This is the Russian swing where you go up to chest level, but, um, you cannot really get that sort of force generation and hip snap and all that stuff that goes with it nearly as well trying to hold a dumbbell or something else like that. So that, that's a big reason why we use kettlebells. Like if people were going to do nothing else, just swings, I think it would be well worth it to get a kettlebell. Yeah, because it's, it's, a, it's a ballistic movement, which more and more research is showing is, is beneficial. And, mm -hmm. but, but under control, um, you know, it's high intensity, which – with intensity, you're going to get more benefits as opposed to just walking on on a treadmill. And then I also find, you know, it is like the best exercise to help when it comes to teaching hip hinging, and a lot and and that is like the number one thing that you could do. Like learning that hip hinge and the kettlebell swing is awesome at it in order to help like prevent irritating your back. I mean. Uh, absolutely, I couldn't agree more. You know, I can't. I can't even describe how many people that I see daily, new clients that just don't have, really don't know how to do do that hip hinging movement properly. Then you know they have like recurring back yeah. tweaks and different stuff that's going on, and then they go to pick up their kettlebell and they're like a rounded turtle or something. Yeah. And it all ends up being <laughs> no. a new movement. So it ends up being like I really like the kettlebell swing when it comes to teaching that hip hinging movement, which is so important to, you know, help prevent back pain. And then also just to educate you to get that movement, because I know, you know, since I've been doing more of that kettlebell work, I just end up moving better and getting moving better when it comes to the hip hinging movement, movement, squatting down better, reaching down for the ground better. So if my movement ends up being better with my movement being better, it puts less stress on my back and on my knees, which ends up being a good thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Absolutely. Absolutely. 
Do you want me to talk a little bit about the Turkish getup too? No, we we got that video, and we'll, we'll, oh, that's right. yeah, that's right. we'll refer okay. to the video, and I'll I'll make I'll uh, I'll put it. It'll be in the YouTube channel, or I'll put it down below. I'll put the video that you and I had done. But you know, are is there any other last things that people should you know think about when it comes to they're they're starting right out. They're th they've heard about this kettlebell thing. They want to give it a go. We kind of talked about you know what it is, what they should look at when it comes to getting a kettlebell, how it's kind of different from other pieces of equipment, and and then lastly, like any last minute tips, maybe like like learning learning these these techniques when it comes to kettlebell stuff. I know that you have some resources and a recent resource that you've kind of created when it comes to kettlebell exercises and workouts. Yeah, sure. Um, I mean, a couple of things I would say, number one is um, take your time at the beginning, learn the form, make sure that you practice, you know, and that you're not, that you are, that you are actually taking the time to instead of just going day one and trying to go all out on every single exercise that you're doing with the kettlebell, be safe, practice, use proper form. Yeah. <laughs> That's one thing. Yeah. Um, one thing that I, that I kind of like is that, is that kettlebells are, um, you know, they, they tie in well to sort of like performance based kind of targets, you know, so that, um, let's say like with some, like, let's say you have a, a workout that you put together and you have you maybe you're doing a certain amount of swings, maybe you mix in some body weight movements, maybe it's you know goblet squats, swings, and push ups. This is an example, right? And, and this is what we actually use these at my at my boot camps at my training studio, like monthly to gauge people's progress. Um, so you put together this circuit. It's it's a really cool way to put together the workouts and gauge your progress over time. So uh, and let's say we we we'll, what we'll do is like. A, you know, do a circuit of exercises, a certain amount of reps, certain amount of times. Time everybody. Make sure they're using the same weight um, each time that they do it. Do it at the beginning of the month. Do it at the end of the month. And you can see how you're progressing over time. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and kettlebells are a great way. And I think that motivates a lot of people further than just saying, I want to lose 10 pounds. But they're going like, oh, I can do the swings better. I can use more weight. You know, I can do this round, this this circuit more times in a certain amount of time. I think that's super motivating for people to keep them going towards whatever goals they have with it. it's fat loss, muscle gain, performance, whatever. Yeah. And I'd really recommend that for people because I, you know, there was a time, I know there's all kinds of research backing, like tracking progress and marking things down and this and that. And I'd done it for a while and then I stopped for a few years. And then I got back into it, like just writing what I've done, what my workouts are, what my weights were at, what I'm able to do now. It's neat to see progress. It's neat to see it kind of motivates you and kind of shows you where you were and where you've move, moved on to. And doing that, kind of like that self-test, uh, you know, at the beginning of the month, the end of the month, you can kind of see how you how your times improve, how your techniques improve, uh, how how many how many repetitions you can end up getting in. It's it's cool. It's good. It's re yeah. really highly recommend writing it writing it down. It makes you more accountable, um, and uh, it, it's more tangible uh, mm -hmm. when it's written down. Uh, absolutely, and it's it's a little more. You know, that kind of thing's been around for a long time. Like the physical fitness test that we did when right. we were in elementary school or yes. whatever but it's it's a sort of a new spin on it it's a little it's also kind of fun to do these to do these these work we call them kettlebell challenge workouts and it's like kind of awesome. a fun thing to do and gauge your progress over time and stuff too awesome so then forest where can people get more information about you they can he uh they can head over to kettlebellchallengeworkouts.com that's the the that that is my website, and that's kind of dedicated to the workouts like we're talking. We were just talking about here, and that's really the best place to find more information about me. Awesome! So thank you very much, Forrest, for your time, and thank you very much, Exercises for Injuries readers, listeners, and uh, and viewers. So this is, is you know, another one of, another interview for you, and hopefully. If you're brand new at kettlebells or kind of thinking about it, hopefully this gave you a little bit more insight and information on what to do on how to get started. And um, you know, if you know, if if you're if you're watching this on YouTube, you know, make sure you head on up above and you hit subscribe. What that'll end up doing is it'll subscribe you to my YouTube channel. So whenever videos or interviews like this come out, you'll you'll get a notification saying that hey, Rick's got a new video. Also, 
you know, swing by exercisesforinjuries.com, you know, type in your injury or pain in the search box. There's a good chance that I got an injury or I've got a, an article on your injury or video on your injury or pain. And then lastly, let Forrest and I know, you know, what you think of this video. Head down below, hit like, leave us a comment, leave us a question, and we'll definitely help you out. So, you know, there you go. This is, you know, Rick Casalge from, uh, in San Diego and Forrest Vance in Sacramento. Thank you very much for joining us, and we will, we will talk to you soon. So take care and bye-bye.